Florian, it's such a pleasure talking to you. And I must say, I've been deeply touched by your music, by the newly composed piece, Pasja Warszawska z 1944 roku, and also by your profound interest in the Polish culture and the history. Would you please tell me how you got interested in learning more about the Warsaw Uprising and how this piece came about? I'm not sure if I should should tell a long or short story because if I start really to tell about my interest in the Polish culture and Polish history that is going to be a long story. In general I'm interested in history and I composed some years ago some electronic pop music and very recently I composed a classical piece for chorus singer, baritone and orchestra. And then I was looking for a possibility to combine the electronics with the classical music or the classical instrument. And I was looking for a theme and I felt that a classic, for example, violin could be the voice of a human being, of the human soul. And the electronic could be the voice the hard voice of, of, of history, of strong destiny. And then I was looking for, for a subject and I made a uh, travel to Warsaw in September 21 and learned more about the uprising in, in Warsaw 1944. I went to the museum there and then I realized, okay, that could be a, the right topic for, for that project to combine a violin with electronic and so step by step I developed the idea got a grant for that so that I could really look for a filmmaker for a violin player and that like that became yeah I started to develop that idea yeah I'm I'm really impressed and amazed how how you've captured the uh, the essence and the right spirit, I would say, of, of the history. Uh, it was so special for me to go to those different places where we found uh, all connected to the Warsaw Uprising. Uh, this history became much more real uh, to me, so I'm grateful for being included in the project. Um, and I hope I was able to, to capture your um, the sound in your imagination uh, the way you, you, you wanted it to be. Uh, I'm very happy about the collaboration. Um, and yeah, and would you tell me how, how was the experience for you being here in Warsaw, seeing those monuments? And uh, has your imagination perhaps changed a bit now about, uh, about the piece? So last September I have been here as a tourist, so it was very relaxed, let's say, I could go to the, all these places. Now I'm here for shooting mm. and that is not that relaxed, but it's, it's exciting and to work with you and Grzegorz and our filmmaker. And so it's a different experience, then we have a different now it's the end of January, so it's cold outside, it's windy. When I have been here, it was end of August or September. Um, if you have a project, you, you, you put a lot of energy inside. It grows, it gets an own, like an own life. And of course, that is different. That it's, it's a piece of art. And there is the, the history. The history didn't change, but out of this history is growing a new being, let's call it like that. And that is, that is new, that is touching. And there are new people. There is you, uh, the wonderful violin player. And uh, from, from I'm very happy from the first moment, when you first answer, <laughs> you wrote to my email, I had the feeling, okay, that, that is... It sounds very natural, it sounds, yeah, it's, it's the right person. <laughs> and the same was with uh, Grzegorz uh, Stanienda, our filmmaker. So now I'm 
we are in three here. We are working together and coming together and that is different and that is beautiful. It's, it's been truly inspiring working with both of you and also pushing myself outside of my comfort zone and uh, trying different things. Uh, I'm truly excited about uh, how, how this project will actually end up. Uh, and we have one more full day of shooting ahead of us. Uh, what are you uh, hoping to, to achieve tomorrow? I'm very happy about the date today. And I hope that tomorrow will be the same from the feeling that we have time for. We have three big scenes we have to shoot and that, that we have time to concentrate on every scene. But I'm very optimistic after, the, after that day today. Yeah, I think nothing really bad could happen. So I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, and maybe I should mention I am German. Mm, many of my grandfathers also come from the region what today is part of Poland. So I was also interested because of that in, in the history. Um, but now that one German is working with two people from Poland mm. uh, is also very special for me in that kind of project because the, the Warsaw Uprising is about our nations were fighting against each other and that we have now we have the distance of more than 70 years almost 80 years and that we can work and we think about that we don't forget but yeah something something grows out of that um, in Germany is not very well known this uprising. Mm. People know about the, the uprising in the ghetto in 1943, but for me it was, was touching that the, the Polish people or part of them tried to get their own liberty in 44. There was the Hitler on the one side and on the other side of the river there was the Red Army. They didn't help them in the uprising. So they tried to free themselves and at the end they lost. Mm. The protagonist of the story on which the piece is based is uh, someone named Ada Bubela. And uh, we know a little bit about her through a short story. We know that she, uh, she was a sanitariuszka uh, and most likely her fate was tragic and she disappeared, she uh, vanished. Would you tell me how you came across her story, uh, why you chose her story uh, and perhaps what's special about her? I realized that if I make a composition, a project about the uprising, it cannot be like in university, a book of 600 pages about details. Mm. If it's kind of a piece of art, it has to touch the people. And what touches people are personal things. And then I was looking for stories about or witnesses uh, uh, about this time. And I found a lot. And I've read these and most of them were quite long. And then f I found a page in the internet about people who worked in health healthcare mm. in that time. And there I found this story about Ada Bubela. And that was very, very touching. It was quite short. It is open at the end, so she disappears, but we don't really know what happened. And that is what I like about art, if, or music, or, or poesy. If it's open and the spectator or the viewer can use their own imagination what will happen so things become alive within the mind of the spectator and for that reason I, I, I thought okay I can use this story and then I was still thinking how can I use it in the music should there be spoken words and then I found what I find I'm happy with that solution that I 
took the music has five movements, five parts, um, and I took only one short sentence out of this story, like a motto, like a subject for for each movement, and the um, the viewer or the, the the listener, he does not not yet know the story, just as a very open sentence at the beginning, a very general sense. So in that sense it's also general for the whole uprising. And after these four movements and then starts the fifth movement, the, at the very end the violin player, what is you, starts to tell us the whole story about Ada. And so it's like a puzzle what gets, we have five sentences and at the end this puzzle gets explained and we know the story about one person but I hope we have learned also a little bit about the whole uprising and many other people who lived in that uprising. Florian, would you please uh, tell me why you came up with uh, the idea of making this piece into five movements? and how you started out uh, the compositional process. Was it through improvisation? Uh, were you working from the keyboard as you're a pianist yourself? I'm curious how the initial stages looked like. There are several sources. One of the sources is improvisation. I just read the story about Ada and then I started to improvise and I recorded a little bit so I got some themes. Then I got the structure and then I thought it should because it should change the character. So the, the, the audience is not get bored and there should be one climax, what is the fourth movement, what is the strongest and the heaviest and and at the end we have this the soft part. So I thought it's like like this figure, more tension, more tension, and then at the end relaxing and even it's a tragic story we have also a kind of kind of light in the music um, and then I thought about the length also at, already at the beginning I had the idea to make a music video hmm. and pop music normally the, this kind of video is about five minutes long so I thought five minutes is a little bit too short but it should not be too long so about ten minutes was my my aim and then I thought also about what, what could I put in the music, especially in the electronic part. And I was looking for ideas that, that the sound is uh, made of. And if you take a limited, uh, limited things only, because in electronic everything is possible, mm. so it's, imp it's difficult to choose. And then I thought, what, what could I choose that I have a witness of that time? And electronic is, is the, the part against the human voice. So that, let's simplify it, it's the electronics, these are the German. And so I, it's a very simple idea. I took the, the voice of Adolf Hitler when he declared war to Poland. And he, there's in Germany at least its famous sentence that from uh, 5.45 in the morning, we shoot back, yeah. he said, shoot back. So, And I took this sentence, and out of this sentence, I made many noises and sounds. I put it in your granular synthesizer. So at the very beginning of the piece, you have a sound, what sounds a little bit like an aircraft, So, but it is made out of this voice. Mm -hmm. And later on, I took even short, parts, syllables, vowels of this speech, I pitched it down, I distorted it, and on one place you can, at the end of the cadenza, third movement, you, if you listen carefully and you know that, you can hear the word very low, zurückgeschossen, that means shoot, uh, shoot back. And in the fourth movement, what is very martiale, the war music, there are a lot of syllables mm -hmm. of, of him. And this word Zeit means since and in different pitches distorted and so the music gets even if you cannot if, if you don't know that you cannot hear 
it, you cannot analyze, okay, that is Adolf Hitler. But you feel, I hope, you feel the character of the music. You certainly do, yes. And if you know it, of course, then you know why it, it feels like, like that. And it makes the violin even stronger with, with the different color of, of human soul and it's vulnerable, mm. the, the violin, as a, as a contrast to the electronics. Yeah, I find this work really brilliant how you were able to to use so many different sources and make this piece actually very, very rich with so many different layers uh, and uh, full of different, uh, yeah, not just musical elements, but also words and yeah, I'm very, very touched and impressed. And and I'm very happy about you because, because you said words. Um, we worked a little bit about making speaking also the violin, not only the words. Mm. And you did very well these sometimes rough tones and it's not, not only beautiful violin playing, it's speaking. Mm. And, and I'm very happy that you, you did it like that. And you played that piece also for your master examination in Berlin in a piano version. I, I have been there. That was the world premiere, let's call it like that. Uh, very touching experience. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for letting me play your music. For also, uh, yeah, this wonderful collaboration we've had over the past few weeks. I've learned a lot and really enjoyed the process. And also we hope that the piece will touch many uh, viewers and this will be uh, something you will also enjoy. Thank you very much for, for these days and I think it's, it's a special kind of, of bringing alive again other. Mm. And I look forward that uh, this video is going to be finished by Grzegorz and I hope that many viewers are going to be touched by the topic, by the story of Ada and by Anja's violin playing and by our collaboration. So that would make me happy if there are people who are interested in that and who can feel what we have felt and maybe what Ada had to suffer. suffer many years ago. I'm Anja Filochowska, I'm a violinist and I'm originally from Warsaw, Poland. My name is Florian Franek, I'm a composer and I'm from Leipzig, Germany.